This is a Roland TR909 and it's not any Roland TR909. No, it's my TR909. I've had this for well over 30 years now and uh, I wasn't planning on making a repair video for it because it works perfectly. Now it is dirty. You have 30 plus years of dirt on the top here and the potentiometers, they need uh, cleaning. But this is what I discovered the day before I started making this video. The hi-hats and the snare drum does not work. Everything else works fine, but the hi-hats and the snare drum somehow are just silent. They don't trigger. That needs investigating. The 909 is a wonderful drum machine in many ways. One of the ways it's wonderful is that it's easy to open and service. You just flip it upside down and remove eight screws from the bottom panel and uh, take it off. And my intention here was to take an oscilloscope and see where the sound disappeared, so to speak. Did uh, the sound get triggered at all? And if so, why doesn't it reach the output? But uh, I attached my oscilloscope and pressed the trigger button. Yeah, the snare drum and the hi-hat now works again. All I needed to do was to flip it upside down and open the lid. It repaired itself. Now this isn't the first time I've opened it up. I've had it behave strangely before and I opened it up to take a look at what it could be and as soon as I have done that it worked. My conclusion then was that it's these ribbon cables either to the sound or from the main board that somehow lost the connection. They have been oxidized. Now last time I just put the lid back on and continued using the machine as normal. But this time I need to take it apart completely anyway. Because I want to clean it both the front and the scratchy potentiometers. Disassembling a 909 is very easy compared to many other music equipment from the 80s. I will show you some of the things that can cause a bit of a problem. But the first thing we need to do is take away the buttons, and that's certainly not the problem. After that, all you need to do is flip it over and start unscrewing the circuit boards. They are all put in with the screws uh, or uh, posts. These uh, hexagonal type posts are underneath the first circuit board, for example. And most of that is fairly easy and simple. Uh, let me show you a few things that are not. The first thing you will encounter is getting the main circuit board out. That's because of these two ribbon cables in the corner. They are in the way. You can bend it over and get it out that way. Or if you want to disconnect them anyway, and you probably do, you can use a screwdriver to fiddle them away, fiddle them out. And then you can get the circuit board out easily. However, all the power supply leads, both from the contact and the main switch, and from the power supply to the circuit boards, it's all soldered in, so you can't remove the circuit boards entirely anyway. Since I want to do that, I'm going to desolder all of it. And boy am I glad I bought that desoldering gun. I've used it a lot more than I thought I would. That was a good investment. See my shootout of various desoldering tools that I published a few weeks ago. One of the output circuit boards have these strange buttons that uh, they're attached with. It's hard to describe, but basically they have a button inside a button and you have to push that inside button out. Then you can remove them. So this is mainly 
finding an appropriately small screwdriver and pushing on that middle button and then the whole thing will pop out. I also removed the sides, that was to get the space so that I could remove the on off button which is also attached just with like plastic clips. Uh, but removing the sides are self evident, there's a screw there and then there's these clips you see that you need to push in and otherwise you just remove it, it's not that hard. Uh, however you need to be careful, you can break these little plastic clip thingies. I did that not this time but last time I opened it. So uh, I'm going to fix that this time. And to fix that I just took a big screw that fitted well uh, inside the spacing there and screwed it in between the broken bit and the non-broken bit. And then I put on super glue, quite a lot of it, and sprayed some baking soda on the super glue because I'm sure you've seen on the internet that that makes for like an instant plastic. I then actually put more super glue on it and let it dry overnight. I also made good use of baking soda when cleaning the front panel. Nothing else seemed to work. Alcohol got rid of the old tape glue rests, but uh, most of the other dirt stayed. But baking soda did the trick. You have to be a bit careful around the window, of course. You don't want to wash that with baking soda. Baking soda can be slightly abrasive and it would scratch it. Alcohol got his revenge though. It was very useful when cleaning these potentiometers. The top of these potentiometers was very dirty and I wanted to clean that before I tried to spray them with contact fluid because I worried that I would just spray more dirt inside the potentiometers if they were this dirty. So I dipped cotton swabs in alcohol and wiped that around the top of the uh, potentiometer and then I took the dry bit of the cotton swab and dried off the dirt. And I had to do this two times on each potentiometer, sometimes three or four, to actually make them even remotely decently clean. That's what 30 years of usage does. And after that it was time for the contact cleaner. I'm not an expert on contact cleaners, but this is what I do. I spray the contact cleaner inside of the potentiometer and then I twist it back and forth to dislodge and clean the dirt. This is what most people do. However, that means that the dirt is still in there and the contact cleaner is also still in there. Most contact cleaners are slightly greasy and that means they attract dust. That means you'll get the same problem again quicker than if there was no greasy contact cleaner there. For that reason the contact cleaner I use which is called Contact 60 and this is not a promotion and this is not an endorsement. I don't know if this is better than anything else but the contact cleaner that I use also comes with a second part. There's They have a contact cleaning cleaner. That cleaner is called contact WL and you spray it in after you have dislodged all the dirt with the contact 60 cleaner. Lastly I try to blow out all the liquid and the dirt with compressed air and I don't have an air compressor so I just use air in a can. It's better than nothing. Synthesizer Keith made an excellent video where he compared different cleaning methods. I'll try to remember to link to it in the description. I also tried to clean off these contacts as well as I could, since I think that's where the problem was. I think there's a bad connection in these contacts that means that the hi-hat and the snare drum didn't trigger. I also suspect that it was the same thing that was the problem when I had a problem with the drum machine some maybe 15 years ago or so, when it was behaving erratically. It's probably also just the contacts, because dismounting the whole thing and putting it together again worked last time. I didn't fix anything and this time all I needed to do was to turn it upside down. I think it's the contacts. 
Now you can't clean them very well. You could probably get a sandpaper in and sandpaper off things, but I can also not see any corrosion. So it can't be a lot of it. So I'm cleaning it with contact cleaner. And I'm hoping that's gonna last for another 10 years at least. And this is a funny thing I noticed. That's a Toshiba logo from the 60s in an 80s drum machine. If you know why it's there, please leave a comment. I'd love to know. I noticed this while I was removing the big buttons here so I could clean them. You just remove them by pulling gently. And that doesn't look gently, but that's because I dropped the button. Uh, you don't need much force to take them off. And washing the buttons is simply done with uh, dishwashing liquid water and uh, toothbrush again. And I put them out on paper to dry them overnight until I realized that then the cats will see them and start playing with them, which is a bad idea. So I wiped them off as well as I could and put them in a box and let them dry there overnight. And then it's just a matter of putting it back together again. And the things that were tricky with taking it apart are the same things that are tricky with putting it back. Um, you need to do some soldering, for example. Luckily here again, Roland has made it very easy to know which thing goes where. Uh, these black and white leads from for the power supply, they only fit one way. The white one is longer than the black one. The uh, power connectors to the various circuit boards are put up in a rainbow pattern, so they're easy to remember which order they should be in if you forgot to take photos of it before you desolder it. And the screws generally can only go one way. There's, for example, different length of the uh, internal screws, the screws that you uh, use for the circuit boards. But uh, one circuit board has one number of screws, like six maybe, and there's six of those screws, and there's seven for the other circuit board, and there's seven of those screws, and so on. So even if you forget to do the reasonable thing, namely take photos of everything before you actually remove it, so you know where each screw goes, if you forget that, it's still really hard to put this back together the wrong way, if you're careful and think about it. It's a very nice machine to service. And that's even without contemplating the fact that it repairs itself. And then it's time to pop the bottom lid on and uh, give it a test drive. And it will have lost its memory content, so press down track one and pattern one and turn it on to reset it. And uh, yeah, maybe turn down the uh, tempo to something more reasonable. Yeah, turns out works perfectly. Time to put the buttons on again and put it back where it belongs, within easy reach on the top shelf of my rack. And to celebrate I bought it some new clothes, instead of this old homemade dust cover I've had for a few years, I bought it a nice new see-through plastic one, so everyone can see what it is. And that's all I have for you this time. If you want me to make more repair videos, please like and subscribe.